Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Pavin, an Olympian and beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. And I'm Adam, former indoor player and coach, current beach volleyball coach, and most importantly, Sarah's husband. Don't sound too excited. <laughs> Always excited. <laughs> okay, we're cruising. We're cruising through season one of Q, everybody. It's crazy. Last episode, some notable occurrences. The only important thing from last episode was that Ukai made the bro house. He flew to the bur to the bro house, and that's pretty much all you need to know. Like a crow. <laughs> um, I would argue that Adam having a glisten in his eyeball was quite noteworthy. Back to that. <laughs> With Kyoko unveiling the fly banner and the guys like really really appreciating it especially the second and third years it was a special moment i'll give you that we both were on the same wavelength that yamaguchi and kyoko were going on a secret date it's coming around it's gonna so happen. yamaguchi went and asked shimada to teach him how to jump float serve Kyoko was getting the fly banner ready because we know that all the teams need a banner. Oh, is that a thing? Yes. Oh. It is a very important thing in Haikyuu, and so make sure you're paying attention. Wait, is it Haikyuu or is that like a, a legitimate Japanese kind of like tradition or part of what they do? Feel free to answer that, but I'm just going to throw it out there to say that I bet it's a tradition. I would agree with you. That seems like it would be a right. thing. Um, okay, and we got the matchup. We met the top four teams, so we will see how this all unfolds. But today we are watching season one, episode 15 of Haikyuu called Revival. No predictions are hitting me. I don't know. I'm, I gotta see something. I gave him a chance. He didn't snatch it. So we're just gonna get started. So I got nothing. let's do this. Let's try to cry some more. Um, I feel like that's going to be episode 16 because I've seen several comments about the next episode. Whoever is like sending spoilers to this guy, you got to stop. No, he should no have spoilers, no, spoilers. no clue what this episode 16 is. Like, no, I, ha I literally have no clue. I just know that it's going to be a, a banger, apparently. Well, we'll find out. We're on 15 today, so stay tuned because it's coming right now. Recap. Is this the revival? Oh. Revival of the banner. <laughs> so embarrassed. She's so shy. Yeah, she's so cute. Nothing like a game day, I will say. なあ。いよいよ最後のサーベルな。お前絶対センチメンタルなこと言うつもりだろう。いよいよ最後のインターハイだな。とかなんとか。いよいよ最後のインターハイだな。あ。俺たち本当にいろいろあったよな。<笑
Two rounds in one day? <laughs> I saw he's a second year though, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Get with the program! Oh, it, they're all Those three, three are the third years! Okay. What gave you that idea? For some reason I just felt like... Oh no, okay. He quit in his second year, now it's a new season. I just got, I got confused for a second. Oh, you're disappointing me. I thought we've trained you so well. Not good with names. Who are the, th who are the second years? This is a quiz. Oh boy. Uh... Okay, let's start with the guys on the screen. What are their names? Suga, Daichi, and Asahi. Correct. Okay, who are the second years? Uh, Tanaka. Yes. Noya. Yes. The libero. Yes. See, that's why they were buddies. That's why I also thought. He I was don't a know second if they year. were buddies, but he was tied into that saga. Okay. Well, it just it seemed to me like they were the same year. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. You probably don't know the names of the other ones. No, okay. the other ones are the other guys who like quit and came back. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. There's okay. No, no hope I know those names. Who are the first years? There's four of them. So we have Hinata, uh -huh. Kageyama, uh -huh. Full Serve Guy. He has a name. Don't know it. Gucci. Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. Oh, Gucci, <laughs> I can re Gucci, I can remember. I'm trying to give you a hint, Mr. Literal. Okay. Blonde. Oh, the middle. Uh, Takeda. Oh dear, no, Takeda's the manager. Oh, uh, hold on one second. Okay, this is not going well. I hope you guys What's realize What's his name? this. Tsukushima. Tsukushima. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is, we're, we're regressing. I'm bad with names, you're bad with pausing. I'd rather be bad at pausing. <laughs> Ikajiri! Where's his business suit? He's not at work. あと落ちた競合飛べないからすちょっと、おい、やばいって、飛べないなんですってんこら、行くぞすみませんああいいえ、危ないダイジ、ジャストマンハンドルズ、プレイトゥギャザー、ライト、ね、<笑><笑> あれを補足。カラスのあずまえ。あ、何どうだ。知らねえのかよ。来たこのやつを手下に使って僕らしてたとか。ほら、お前はやれよ。喧嘩だ。警察、警察呼びましょう。路上でなんかやばいもん振り
I mean, that's the typical, like, who's got the tallest player, who's coming in, what do the first years look like, the pre-tournament, kind of sizing up and... No, but they're only doing it to Asahi. That's not, they were talking about every team, who's coming in, the flightless crow. I mean, Asahi, he brings it on himself. The man bun. No, I just think it's so cute because he's the exact opposite of what everybody thinks. Like, he's the most, like, anxious, passive, softy. Fair, but that's always how it goes because you're never the same person. I'd say you're rarely the same person on the court as you are off the court. Or do you disagree with that? Are you talking about generally? Yeah, generally. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. I will, <laughs> I will say, so when I played club volleyball, I was, we'll use the word obnoxious. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I can, okay, continue. And I ended up playing in university with a couple of guys who I played club against. Some of the guys became my really good friends. And let's just say their opinion of me from knowing me on the court was less than flattering and they were very surprised as to who I was as a person. How sweet you are. Okay, what did obnoxious Adam look like? I mean... <laughs> I would, I would kind of yell and scream and I always, my hair was always a different color. Like we would go to nationals, it was blue, it was green, it was red. See, it he's was... very proud of this. It like literally gives me the most secondhand embarrassment when he talks about his hair colors, but I don't know. I did I was, not see was... Adam being obnoxious ever. He is the nicest person in the world. I was a cocky little, and I won't finish that sentence. For sure. For sure. Adam is Daichi through and through, and he can pretend that he wasn't. But I don't see it. There, that is why my dad said that I couldn't go on a date with him. There's a, competi yeah. there's a competitiveness that you can just let out when you play sports. And you don't have to, no, hold, no holding back. I need some, if you have video footage of Adam circa age 14 to 17, hit me up. Thank you. ボーダンマク、聞いたみたいだね。そうですか。僕の声もなんかよりよっぽど効果あったよ。かわいい。声かけてみろよ。え、ちょ、キヨト。ファンタイム。やめなさい。ちのこさん。はたかれた。まあ
Okay, what are you laughing at? I I love that. I love it. Just the silent pointing? 100%. I, Maybe that is what Adam meant when he said he was a little obnoxious. I mean, so there's there's an element of, uh, so for those of you who don't know, I also played hockey growing up. Um, As you do in Canada. Yeah. And I was, I was a, a large child. Like, I, <laughs> I was. He was like the baby and spirited away. <laughs> I was, like, I was 6'4 when I was 15 years old. Um, I had my growth spurt early, which is good for sports when you're, you're that age. You're getting the full history of wow. Adam's life here. Yeah. I love it. But you, so you play hockey and when you're that big, like your job is kind of to intimidate. The and, enforcer. Yeah. And so you just, for me, it's the, it's the atmosphere, it's the environment where guys who are growing up, they want to compete. They want to do all of that. Like that's the, that's the environment where it's okay to do that. And they had his number last year, a hundred percent. A hot, this this is about winning. He didn't. It might have been a little rude. <laughs> weird. But you are yeah, and weird. But you're in competition. You are here to win this tournament. And they had his number last year. And you want to show up and remind that guy that you're not going to beat us. They're in the same draw. They play in the second Never round. Never forget uh, is what he was saying. A hundred percent. And to Asahi's credit. He, he just stood there. He, he didn't back down. He looked him in the eyes and he stood there. I, li I, like, I like everything about that. You know what would have made it better is if he looked at him and he was like, never again. No, you, didn't need, you don't need to say anything. Okay. You don't need to say anything. <laughs> oh boy. He is unwell. His aura is stronger. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
さっきの伊達子を見てビビったかあそ,そんなわけないじゃないじゃないですかどっちだまた飲まれてる早いとこなんとかしないとあの正常線の2枚だけはまずい<笑>同じ小心者でも朝日はあんま緊張しないよな小心者そういう顔をしてる緊張を紛らわすコツがあるんだよ今まで最強に怖かったことを思い出すんだそれが怖ければ怖いほどこれから起こることはそれより怖いはずがない平気ってなるから今までで最強に怖かったこと The ring! Maybe. Oh, Hirata? No, it's okay. Oh, Hirata, what's that? The first thing I got to do is to take a look at the other side of the road. I'm going to take a look at the other side of the road. I'm going to take a look at the other side of the road. I'm going to take a look at the other side of the road. I'm going to take a look at the other side of the road. I love how Hinata's most terrifying moment in his life was when he hit Kageyama in the back of the head. I mean, that tracks. <laughs> the other choices, though, were riding a roller coaster, <laughs> knocking a toupee off of somebody's head, watching a horror movie, and getting a bad grade on a math test. So. <laughs> A little sheltered. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Shida. So, so, up to the Hi, hi. Yo, yo, send No, I was going to ask you what's your scariest moment? In my life, yeah. I will tell you. I didn't even have to think about it. I didn't have to think about mine either. Okay, what was yours? It might be the same, actually. No. No? Okay. 100% not. My scariest moment in my life was... I've had a few. Maybe I can tell you guys about them as we go along here. But it should be a live stream. <laughs> scariest moments. The scariest moments of my life. I will tell you the one that jumped into my mind immediately. I was, at, I was in college, one of my friends was from the town where the college was. So one weekend we went to his parents' house. There was like a group of us. Are you okay? Yeah. There was a group of us. Um, and we were in the, we were downstairs, we were like playing ping pong or whatever. And it was pouring rain, okay? Do you know the story? Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of a, I went to school in Nebraska. <laughs> Not a lot of city lights where this house was. So it was pitch black outside. So I'm playing ping pong with a couple of the girls and all of a sudden some of the guys come down and they're like, oh my gosh, like where's Brandon? Some, one of the other ones. We're like, oh, I don't know. They're like, well, let's look for him. So we go out on the patio. There's like a lake in the distance. There's a flash of lightning. And I think I see something like out by the lake, but it was, it was lightning, it was so fast, I didn't think about it twice. So I'm standing under the patio again. Lightning flashes again. I for sure saw something and it was closer. And it was the shape of a person. So what I thought I saw out by the lake was the shape of a person. And when the second flash went, that person was closer. And I was like, um, I think somebody's out there. And they were like, no, what are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. Lightning flashes again. This person is getting closer. So here I am, crime junkie, being like, there is somebody out in the wilderness here who is coming to murder me. I was like, we gotta get inside. We have got to get inside. By this point, the other, a few other people had seen this too. We are freaking out. I go to open the door. It is locked. <laughs> I start 
losing my mind. Lightning flashes again. This shape is running towards us. I cannot express to you the terror I felt at that moment, knowing that some random thing was running at me in the pitch black that I couldn't escape. <sighs> My heart is racing telling you about it right now. Turns out it was a prank. <laughs> and they set us up and it was one of the guys that one of our friends and they completely set us up. That was the A, the best prank of all time, but B, the most terrified I've ever been. Fair enough. You? Driving your family through the Swiss Alps. Adam has alluded to this once before. Um, when, oh, in Spirited Away. If you haven't watched Spirited Away yet, check it out. He alludes to us driving through an olive grove where he, where he had to pull the 37 point turn. He brought this up. <laughs> what? I'm just shaking my head at how dumb I was. Well. Am I supposed to tell him no, or is this a surprise? No, like, or I was just we thinking just... about it. So Sarah and I have been married for less than a year. Like six like months. Like six months. And to, in fairness, we dated for less than eight months before we got married. So it was pretty quick. So like, I know her family, but like we haven't spent a lot of time together. And we're living in Italy at the time. It's Christmas. Her family comes to watch her play pro. Match is over. And we decide we're going to spend Christmas in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So we have a tiny little Renault that is no bigger than the coffee table sitting in front of me. And we're gonna drive from Italy to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So we go, we get to the border and we pull up to the mountain pass and there's a train that goes from Italy to Switzerland. Through the mountains. Through the mountains. We're gonna get on the train, we pull up and didn't want to pay. <laughs> well, they were like, it's 75 euros. I'm like, screw that. We'll just drive over the mountains. We're not going to pay 75 euros. So we turn around, we back out. The, the attendant at the train station was kind of shaking his head like these people are idiots, but we're like, whatever, we're going to go. So we start driving and it's totally fine. It's a great drive. It's beautiful. And there's five massive human beings packed into this tiny car, like six, four and over. And you know, big, big people. So we're driving and all of a sudden, like you get to a certain point. It starts snowing. It starts snowing, but they stop putting guardrails up. So we're driving up the mountain and you're winding around and we start to see all of these cars on the side of the road, putting chains on their tires. And that's not really a thing. Like I'd never seen that before. In Canada, we just have snow tires. Yeah. We also, unless you're at and West, we don't, don't have really mountains. drive in mountains where we grew up. <laughs> So we keep going and, and the conditions start getting worse and the road starts getting slippery and we're in this tiny car and you know, you can feel yourself starting to slide and the visibility has gone and there's thousand foot drop off to the side. And I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm white knuckling the steering wheel. I'm thinking I could wipe out the entire pad and line in, you know, one missed turn. And we're going and I'm literally doing 10 kilometers an hour in a standard car in first gear in first gear. <laughs> And we get to this point where the tires are just slipping on the road. It won't climb any further. And I'm sliding backwards while I'm trying to go forwards. And, and I'm like, we're, we're going to die. Like I'm not, we're not going to make it. Oh, I didn't mountain. think we were going to die at that point. Well, I die. I thought we were going to die when we managed somehow to turn the car around. And then we started going down the mountain again on the side of the drop. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the most terrified I've ever been. Like the control, feeling like the car's just going to slide out from you, snow on the road, no visibility, 12 point turn in the middle of a mountain. You can't see anybody coming either way. It was, that was the most dad, scary I've ever been. My dad, who is not one to give many compliments at the best of times, was being... <laughs> 
so nice. He was terrified for his life. To Adam. He was terrified for his life. I have played volleyball forever, and he, Adam got more compliments in that one trip down the flippin' mountain than I have in my entire career, let me tell you. <laughs> So the funniest part of the story, after we get down the mountain and stop snowing and the road's fine, we pull back up to the train station two hours later? I don't know, yeah. I and blacked the, out. And the guy just kind of smirks at us and takes our 75 euros as we get on the train. It was great. We enjoyed that story time that none of you asked for. <laughs> and most likely all of you missed it and fast forwarded. So welcome back. Here we go. That's a real gym, I believe. Oh, really?
Oh, I think I held my breath for that whole thing. And that's, I took a big gasp at the whistle. That's always the like, you feel the most emotions there standing on the baseline. You're excited, you're ready to go, you're a little bit nervous. See how they handle it. Predictions? Well, I think they're gonna win this match. It would be a short season if they did it. But maybe they do. Maybe. But I think they'll win this match. I'm sure we won't see who ends up winning in this episode. But uh, yeah, I think I think they'll be fine here. I'm, I'm predicting a rough a rough start, and then they'll settle in. Probably I'm gonna say a win three. A win and three. Yeah. Okay. 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 Look at that. Look at how messy that circle is. It's uncharacteristic. Okay, that Karasuno circle was tight. It was tight. Okay, no breaks in the circle. It was connected. Yeah, but that's Nakoma's line. But I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you remembered, which is great. Um, and Takeda, you are just poetic enough, my friend. Okay, he is the best. Short and sweet, inspirational, mm -hmm. get after it. Mm -hmm. But that circle is broken. And if that isn't foreshadowing, or if that isn't a clue as to their status, I don't know what is. <laughs> あ、相手戸惑ってんな。ま、当然だよな。高さ勝負のミドルブロッカーに、あれだもんな。落ち着いちゅうば。スタメンのリベロじゃないんだ。なめたやつ、大変にいます。経験者は語る。次は絶対
he's your energy guy. Like he, he, I feel like if you get him going, he just pulls people along with him. Uh. He's probably their least efficient hitter from what I've seen out of those ones. I mean, as long as he not is actually connected with the ball, but he's good for your team morale. But he's and, the heartbeat. Yeah, and early if you can get him going, I think I think that's important. That's why he's in the bro house, ladies and gentlemen. Dead in their tracks. Oh, he comes down. It's Karasuno's revival, baby. Single a limb. Adam's nightmare. <laughs> it's not my nightmare, it's just my nightmare. It's match one of the season. Adam has been thinking about this. Since we told him about it. You're not wrong. So it's starting. The real matches are starting. They were more composed than I thought they were going to be. I thought there'd be some nerves, I thought. Like, oh, yeah. Hinata made his mark right from the get go. They connected well, no blocks, straight down, turned a few heads. We'll see how he serves. We'll see, you know, how yeah, the reception holds up. That's not why he's on the The typical court. problems yeah. that Karasuno has. We met Aoni, that's the no eyebrow guy. And we met the Datik Datiko guys. Uh, Oikawa and Seijo are back in the stands. Um, yeah, this is exciting stuff. Well, see what I, I think, I mean, I'm not going to, but based off that start, I feel like this is gonna be a 2-0. No, you can't, you I, said not, three. I said, I said three, I will hold my prediction. I'm just saying, Given more information, they look better than I thought they were going to look. We don't even know what the score is. That's true. It's people serving and they're not serving. And... Yeah. So he thought it was going to be in three. We know he was wrong with his first prediction about Suga starting. Well, not off to a great start in the prediction department. Um... Easy for you to say you've seen this. Somebody go back and tally Sarah's predict predictions. I want to know what her percentage of correct is. I just wanted to be known that I often make predictions mid-rally that are correct. Okay. So, yeah, go tally them up. I'm not ashamed when I get them wrong. If anything, they're very entertaining. That's what I'm here for. Um, let us know what you think. Okay, if you made it through our story time, let us know what your scariest moment of your whole entire life was, okay? And we will put them all to the vote. Um, yeah, 
Thanks for joining us. We'd be so excited if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel, and Adam has been talking about episode 16 for the last few episodes, so next week is episode 16. So we will see if all this nonsense that he's been talking about is correct. No, not nonsense I've been talking about, what people have been saying. You guys, you need to be careful what you're putting in the comments because he literally, and I know that I've said this before, he literally analyzes every single one. So please be careful. We don't want to, we don't want to like ruin this. All right. Um, so yeah, we'll see you next week for episode 16. You guys are the best and yeah, see you next time.